It's not easy starting or running an architecture business. There are the ups and the downs. Knowing how to stay productive during those down times while work is slow will significantly improve the chances of your business succeeding. It's about staying productive. Now, there are many different reasons work could be slow. It could be that you just submitted your project to the city and you're waiting for a response. It could be that you're waiting for a response from your client. Or it could be that you just don't have the same amount of projects coming in as they once did before. If you find yourself in either of these situations or something similar, I recommend doing these three things. Start with who you know. At this point, you probably have a network of people that you can reach out to, but if you don't, I would recommend cold calling. And we'll talk more about that later in the video. Your network includes your colleagues, past and current clients, consultants, and your family and friends. Now, it's important to maintain and strengthen these relationships with the intent of fostering future opportunities. Specifically, you want to do three things. First, you want to keep in touch. Regularly staying in touch with past clients and contacts through follow-up emails and phone calls is important. It helps keep you top of mind. Keep in mind that not every communication should come with an ask. A simple thank you note of appreciation or a quick check-in on past clients goes a long way in reinforcing those relationships and encouraging future collaborations. The next thing you want to do is ask for reviews and feedback. It's important to reach out to past clients and ask for their feedback and give them the opportunity to address any concerns they may have had. You may not necessarily like what they have to say, but this will help you improve the services that you provide. Lastly, you want to work on developing incentives and referrals. Don't hesitate to ask satisfied clients or family and friends to refer you to somebody else. Personal recommendations go a long way. If appropriate, you can also offer a finder's fee or a referral commission for those that provide you new business. You can even offer incentives to write reviews. Now that we've discussed networking, let's move on to number two, cold calling. Now cold calling was once considered to be the foundation of sales and business development. However, in today's digital world, it's more of a lost art. Now don't get me wrong, technology has undoubtedly introduced effective methods of prospecting. However, I found that a well-crafted cold call provides a level of connectedness that people still appreciate. Mastering this skill requires time and persistence. Here are some key things to consider. Research your prospects. Before making the call, take some time to research the businesses and individuals you'll be contacting. Understand their projects, their needs, and any recent developments in their business. This will allow you to tailor your pitch to their specific interests and challenges. The next thing you want to do is prepare a script. While you don't want to sound overly rehearsed, having a script will help you stay focused and ensure that you're covering your key points during the call. Practice your script until you're comfortable and confident delivering it naturally. Remember to be friendly and stay professional. Introduce yourself, the nature of the call, and remember to handle rejection gracefully. Let's talk a little bit about follow-up and tracking your results. Persistence is key when it comes to cold calling. If you don't reach somebody on the first attempt, make sure to leave a voicemail and follow up with an email or another call. Keep track of all your interactions and consistently follow up to stay top of mind. Remember to track your results. I like to keep a track of all my cold calling efforts, including number of calls made, responses received, and any follow-up actions required. Analyzing your results will help you identify what's working well and where you can make improvements. Additionally, it's worth noting that while emails can be a useful tool for initial outreach and follow-up, they may not yield the same level of response and engagement as cold calling. In my experience, direct communication over the phone allows for a more immediate and personalized interaction, making it easier to convey enthusiasm and build rapport with prospects. I recommend prioritizing cold calling as a primary prospecting strategy supplemented by strategic email follow-ups as needed. And finally, number three, focus on your online presence, specifically your website and your business listings. There's a lot that goes into building a strong online marketing strategy. However, I would recommend starting with your website and a Google business page. Your website should be a digital portfolio of your work with high quality images and detailed descriptions of your projects, highlighting your unique style and areas of specialization. Including client testimonials and case studies can help build credibility and trust with future clients. 
Include your website in your email signature and make sure that it's mobile friendly and functional on different screen sizes. Make sure you also have an easily accessible contact or inquiry page that's visible from your main homepage. This is key to getting online traffic converted into leads. The less buttons people have to click to get a hold of you, the better. I also recommend having an about me page with information about you and your firm, including your background, your experience, qualifications, and some personal likes and hobbies. Personalizing this page will help build trust and relatability with potential clients. In addition to your website, you should also leverage online platforms such as Google My Business, Yelp, and House to attract local clients. Claiming and optimizing a Google My Business listing can improve visibility in local search results and provide essential information such as business hours, location, and contact details. Remember to encourage satisfied clients to leave reviews on your Google Business page to help build credibility and attract new clients. In conclusion, it's inevitable that at some point work will slow down. Cultivating your network, cold calling, and working on your online presence are just a few ways that I found to be helpful in staying productive and bringing in more clients. Leave a comment, let me know what has and hasn't worked for you, and as always, feel free to reach out anytime with questions.